Okay. I don't know why I did that. I'm actually embarrassed. Um, and I wish I edited my video so I could cut that out, but I don't. Um, so it's me, Rylan. Um, it is April 29th, 2019 at 5.07 PM. And um, I have exciting news. So yesterday was the opening of my my show um yes it was the opening of my second off off broadway show um it's called brain food um and yes we had our opening so the last video that i made which i feel like was a month ago uh maybe even two honestly i don't know because i've been so busy with the show uh, and I haven't had a life and yeah, um, was concerns about being a trans masculine human being and playing a cisgender male role. So I would like to uh, follow up on that now that I've opened the show. Um, so, um, it's a short run of a show. We do three weekends and two shows a day. Um, so yeah, pretty intense. It's a uh, it's a show about mental health. Um, it's six different plays. There's 11 actors total. My play, there's two other people. Um, they're both ladies. And um, I identify as trans masculine slash gender fluid in that realm. And I'm actually wearing like a hella gay shirt today. Not on purpose just just my style um but a lot of my video last time um that nobody watched so thanks guys um was me rambling about how whenever i get a new role and i'm playing a cisgender male which professionally has only happened once so far but i did it whenever i was um at conservatory um at acting conservatory um I, well, I'll just focus on the professional role that I had to do before is that I was terrified of what people were going to think about me and that people were just going to judge me and think like, what is a girl doing playing this part? This doesn't make any sense because as the script evolved, when I made this video, it was either like a month or two months ago, regardless of when it was, the script has drastically changed. It is not what it was. It was a devised script, which basically means that it was a collaborative script and that we all worked on it together. We changed it, we molded it. I actually had a chance to have input in it. Some of my personal thoughts and lines were put into the show. Um, so yeah, it was an extremely collaborative process. So I, I'm always really scared whenever I get cast as a cis male because I'm afraid that people have to suspend their best disbelief to believe that I'm a guy because I look and sound like a female even though I identify as a male. Um, and I realized that that is always my fear in the beginning, but I guess I realized that that goes out the window eventually. I don't know when, but um, pretty soon, at least in this process, is it wasn't an issue. And I actually think um, the same situation when I played Constantine in The Seagull. I don't remember ever wondering once actually in this rehearsal process, really thinking about it too much. Now, the specific thing about this play is the language of my character is extremely heavy on his his male identity. Um, the character that I played, he is a burn survivor and he struggles with an eating disorder. So there are a lot of lines um, where he is talking about being teased um, because he was overweight or being a burn survivor. So there's a lot of language about being a dude um, hey man, um, kind of stuff like that, very male 
centric language that I would have thought would have bothered me, but I honestly have not blinked twice about any of that language. I've just accepted it, but not even accepted it as in like taken a mindful moment to be like, this is what's happening. It's just like, it, it just, it just happened. It, it is what it is. Um, so I think that's really cool. I'm really glad because if you watch the video before I was freaking the fuck out and thinking, how am I going to trick the audience into thinking that I'm a guy? But because I connect so much to this character and I did so much research, um, and by research I mean I did so much prep on this character and really tried to find my way into how much I can relate to them because this person, his name is Paolo, that's the character's character, the character's name, uh, struggles with body image issues. I tried to find my way in through that. So maybe that was part of it is that the emotional preparation that I did as an actor kind of forced me out of my head to not be able to look at this as a gendered thing and I was able to kind of look at it as a human thing. Now there was part of my research that I did kind of have to look at things from a male perspective and do a little bit of research as to how eating disorders affect males differently. Um, I know how it affects me being born a female at birth and having an eating disorder and the stigma that comes along with being a male with an eating disorder, but I don't know what it's like to be born a cis male and having an eating disorder and have that stigma thrown at you, which is a really big part of my character's arc in the show. So I kind of had to do research on that because that's not my lived experience and I couldn't relate to that. So that was kind of, that was an interesting challenge and some research that I got to do. But yeah, I didn't have to think about it. It just went, it just went away and it wasn't a problem. And I'm really grateful for that. I had other things to worry about. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that means that I'm beginning to accept my gender identity more. Uh, if I'm just doing the work as an actor and I'm fuck the rest and focus on the work. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm really grateful that that was not the focus of this two month rehearsal process and that I'm not going on this stage and wondering, oh God, what are people thinking of me? Are people thinking that my voice is too high? I will admit that I am thinking, I have thought a couple times like, oh, my voice is really high, like, you know, blah, 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 I am with two, uh, females on the stage, you know, whatever. I guess I've had a couple doubts in my head, but in the end it doesn't really matter because it is very clear in the language that I am a male, but it's not stressing me out. It's not something that I'm thinking about every time before I go on stage, and it certainly isn't something that has come into the rehearsal room with me. So I think that's fantastic. That's really great growth for me and I just wanted to share my experience in a non 16 minute video that apparently I'm growing as an actor and as a trans actor uh, that's a really big deal because my goal especially as a gender fluid actor who aims to play male and female roles um, my goal is to just play human beings regardless of what is or is not in your pants because I don't think it matters. Um, so I'm really glad to say that that hasn't held me back about how high I can hear my voice is right now or if I like look into the finder and see um, the shape of my face. It doesn't matter. I'm playing a character. So just wanted to share this with you guys and say like I'm on off off Broadway again that's exciting um and for those of you that are wondering like where why is it off off why isn't it off why isn't it Broadway um just like quick trivia um the the way that um New York theater is designated for whether something is on Broadway or not 
Um, it has nothing to do with the quality of the work. It's um, house size. Um, and house size is the size of the theater and how many seats are in the house. Um, so for example, my theater has 100 seats. Um, so that's why it's considered off, off Broadway. And I think for it to be off Broadway, it's, I'm taking a guess. I'm just gonna throw out 300. I don't think that's right, but I'm gonna say it and commit 300. Um, and then Broadway, I really don't know. But uh, that's what's going on, so yay! Okay, have a good day, bye.